a black teen quietly sat in the front row of Princeton's elite physics class uninvited. The professor mocked him, accused him of getting in through a quota, and tried to humiliate him with an impossible equation. But 20 minutes later, this intruder would expose not just the professor's ego, but his entire academic empire. Marcus Johnson wasn't supposed to be in that room. Princeton's most elite physics course had no record of his name, no competition wins, no academic sponsors, just a 19-year-old black teen in a thrift store sweater sitting in the front row. Dr. Richard Coleman, a tenure genius and academic gatekeeper, paused his lecture and scowled. What are you doing in my class? Marcus didn't flinch. I'm here to learn physics, sir. Coleman sneered. This course is for students with IQs, not quotas. The students laughed. Marcus didn't. Come up here, the professor said. Let's see if you can even read the board. He pointed at a monstrous quantum electronomics equation, one that would take doctoral candidates hours to solve. Marcus walked to the board in silence. He picked up the chalk. I'll use the Coleman-Weinstein approach, he said, referencing a method the professor himself had once published. The room went still. Within 20 minutes, Marcus finished the equation with fewer steps than Coleman had ever used. Stunned silence. Then a cold whisper was this variation eliminates three intermediate steps. Marcus said, calm and composed. Coleman's face palled. What no one knew was that Marcus had spent years teaching himself physics for books pulled out of dumpsters in Newark. No mentors, no labs, just passion and perfect memory. That same week, Marcus submitted an essay on superstring theory. Not 10 pages, but 25, complete with an original framework, and he brought something else to the academic committee. A dossier proving Coleman had plagiarized the late Professor Thompson's unpublished work. The room erupted. Men Coleman's own research assistant. Back Marcus up. This isn't the first time, she said. He silenced marginalized students for years. Coleman shouted, denied it all, but the math didn't lie, and neither did the plagiarism evidence. By the end of the hearing, Marcus was granted full admission. With a full scholarship, Coleman was suspended. Three months later, Marcus took the stage as Princeton's newest assistant professor, lecturing in the very hall where he was once ridiculed. And behind him, a virtual network of students from underfunded schools studying his lectures. Because Marcus didn't just want to win, 